subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Matt and Garrett, we're here with you sharing time again. Very excited to have uh, have another episode coming your way today. As we're getting into this episode, Ninja Selling, if you want to learn more about it, what we're talking about, what all this comes from, all this great information, and our thoughts that we add on top of it, you can go to ninjaselling.com. If you want to learn about our coaching program and where Matt and I spend most of our time and where I work with a lot of our great coaches in Ninja Selling, you can go to the coaching tab on there and you can find out about all of our great coaches. If you want to go learn from a group of people that listen to the podcast and share a lot of your sentiment about Ninja, you can go to the Ninja Selling Podcast community in Facebook. We'd love to have you there. 14,700 people are in that group right now. It is growing continuously and it's an amazing group of people, wonderful ninjas. And I do want to say to everybody, as you go into that room, there are ninjas of all different levels in there. There are ninjas that are brand new to Ninja that just found out about it and they're excited about this new journey, just like you were at one point in your journey. They are excited about where they're at and getting started in it. And there are also veterans, battle-weary veterans that have used Ninja for many years in their business and understand it inside and out. And uh, collaborate with those people as well, as well as you good old veterans out there, help the newbies coming in so they can add this into their business and their lives. With that being said, Matt, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm great, man. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's early here. It's early always, but uh, I'm <laughs> feeling good this morning. Got my tea, had a nice glass of water. I am set to go for our time, man. Me too, man. I got my, I got my water. I've already been fueled with coffee and all the things, and I'm excited to talk about this funny you bring up time and having these things in place because... The topic we're talking about today is is kind of along those lines of managing time, more so about the triggers and discipline associated with it. But you you brought this to the table. So explain a little bit of background on this and then let's dive in. Well, I, I brought this to the table. And as, as we've mentioned a lot, I've mentioned a lot, at least, that a lot of our episodes and the things that we talk about come actually out of the things that we see out of the people that we coach. And, you know, a lot of times, we feel unique, like it's just us. Like, oh, this is my problem, my issue. I'm dealing with this. And, and it's funny, we all re realize as coaches, as we all talk to each other, that these are common problems. They, they, they kind of go across all these big groups of people. And um, we work together as coaches a lot to be like, oh, you have that going on? I have that too. How do we say yeah. that for these people? Yeah. Well, I was at a coaching call the other day and she had brought up her calendar and coming into 2024. And she said, you know, what? I need to just clean my calendar. I need to clean the whole thing off, start from scratch. And she very lightly said, I have these alerts that go off all the time and I just hit snooze on them. I just tell them to go away. I hit close. Like I, yep, I hear you go away. And the more she was talking, she was saying, you know, over years of using this calendar, I have these appointments that I've put in. And I've had these things that I've put in and they, they've just kind of sat there in the background and I've gotten used to ignoring them. And as she was sharing to me about ignoring them, I started to let her know the dangers of trying to get control of a calendar and trying to get control of your time when you have alerts that don't mean anything anymore. And the example that I use, Matt, and then we're I want to dive into this with you because you brought up some great ways to think about this and how to look at it. But when I look at like alerts on a calendar, you, you got to look at how our brains are programmed in. And our brains are programmed in to be alert to sounds and warning signs around us. Because if you go back to like caveman days, there were things that, that either said, oh my gosh, danger, 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 protect my family, or things that said, ooh, I love that sound. That means there's water nearby. Like we, we got to go check that out over there. We, we know these things to listen for. In today's world, you know, when you're driving in your car and you hear a siren, especially if you're coming to an intersection, you stop, you start looking around. Is it behind me? Is it in front of me? Is it off to the side? And we kind of take inventory of everything around us based off this one sound. And then you all know, because I know when that damn siren is in a song on the radio <laughs> and you're on high alert. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's a damn song. That song always gets me every single time that song comes on. Well, what happens around these sounds? Luckily, the song doesn't come on every single day, 
all the time that desensitizes you to the sound of the siren. Please don't do that. We all don't need that. <laughs> but in our calendars and in our world, it does happen. And so here we've got this calendar, these systems around us that are designed, designed to ping us and alert us to certain things, messages that are really important to us, certain sounds that we go, oh, when that sound happens, that's really important. I got to pay attention to it. We now have this sound in our calendar that when it pings, our brain goes, whatever, I don't need to pay attention to that. And it's not even a conscious thought. It's totally subconscious. You just didn't even hear it go off. Some of you may have had it happen where your phone pings and somebody else says, hey, did somebody's phone just go off? And you're like, I don't know if phone went off. Like, I didn't even hear it. Well, it was your phone that went off. You're just desensitized to that sound and that alert now. So this all came about because she was trying to get control. And one of the things that we had come up out of this conversation was you either need to reprogram a new sound in. You also need to clean out all the stuff that you're not choosing to show up for anymore that needs to go away. And you need to reestablish a new relationship with this counter if you're going to use this as a tool to help you stay focused and help you stay on track. I think a lot of us deal with this, Matt. I know I've dealt with it in my life. As we started to talk about this, I said, I just put a new app on my phone for an automatic locking front door. And it makes the same damn sound as my text messages. And it's been driving me crazy. And I'm slowly watching myself when I hear that sound, not quite go, ooh, somebody needs me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this this definitely, I mean, this happens with everything. and Or it goes, has the opposite effect too and becomes something that pulls you away from what you want mm -hmm. to be doing, right? And before recording, you brought up the Pavlovian response, right? You know, so when, when we do something, it triggers something else. That's the... You know, Pavlov's dog, if anybody wants to go and Google that. But also, we've talked about before how you can form a scotoma, which is a blind spot in a vision, but also that can work auditorily as well. So when you're like, oh yeah, that that sound comes by, like I don't even notice it anymore. Somebody else might, they'll be like, did you hear that ding? They're like, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I guess I did hear that thing, right? Matt, you just brought up the distraction side of it. And like, a lot of us don't realize that when we program all these things into our calendar and here we are trying to be really focused on something else, it can be a massive distraction in your energy and your focus of just trying to get the thing done that you're going, I'm going to be focused with this. The other day I was, somebody was showing me something and like, ping, an email thing came up and that person just then just started going and responding to the email. Like, wait, what about the thing? We were doing. Was it a coaching call? No, it wasn't a coaching oh, call. I hate it when it's on a coaching call. That's happened on coaching calls, though. It's happened on coaching okay. calls. But there's these triggers in our responses, and and I look at all that and I say, okay, well, also, what what is our relationship with those actions, the things that we're trying to create, those time blocks on our schedule, the appointments? Where is our discipline at, and how well have we trained it? And we have to do this up front. We have to make the choice and the decision up front of how we want to show up for these things so that if it is a reminder in the calendar to do something, that when we set that, we show up those first several times to do it without fail so that it doesn't become the scotoma. Or if we have something that is triggering a response, we eliminate it so it's not becoming the thing that's distracting us from what we want to do. And it's I'm not saying this is easy, right? I mean, it's simple. The systems for all of this stuff is relatively simple. The execution of it is where the challenge is, but it's also where the victory is, right? And particularly when it comes to making your calendar work for you. I mean, if you can develop a calendar that works for you, and it's it's really is ninja success habit number two, show up a stay on your agenda. For that to happen, and this doesn't get talked about a lot in Ninja because there's a lot of other great elements of the Ninja 9 in our systems, but if you don't have an agenda that you have chosen, that you are comfortable with, that you are confident in, it's really hard to, to execute success habit number two, show up. Otherwise, you're just showing up for everybody else's stuff or you're showing up in response to these alerts that maybe you didn't control. And that's an element of it we got to bring in. I think in getting control of it, as you said, Matt, it, it's it's not hard, but it it also is something that you you consciously need to take the... You may need to make the decision that I'm going to own this. Like, this is something I'm going to take control of moving forward. And it's easy to let it go and let it get kind of out of control because we just kind of go like, I'm going to do it later. I'm going to do it later. I'm going to sit down and handle that later. I got to fix my calendar at some point in time. And now a year passes and you still haven't fixed your calendar. I was going to say months, but I literally years will pass. And you're like, I've got to fix that. I've got to do something with it. 
oh, we can take this back to cars. This is perfect. Okay, so <laughs> cars are a great example along this because you can hear that there's something going on with your car. You know there's something that needs to be fixed, and we just let it go. And we let it go and we let it go. And I, I got to take it into the mechanic. I got to have that thing checked out. And we let it go a little bit longer. And we let it go to the point that some, usually for a lot of people, they let it, it breaks. Now it is a toad into the mechanic, getting it fixed with maybe even more damage that's been done over the months that you've let this thing kind of rattle and shake and do what it's doing, uh, where you probably could have had a fairly easy fix up front if we just stayed on top of my father-in-law. We're having a conversation about cars the other day, and we were talking about how you know, it's better to do routine maintenance on a vehicle rather than the big fix. Yeah. We joked about my Suburban a couple of years. Well, I mainly it was about last year, the year before, where we had let lots of things go on it because I was letting 16-year-olds drive it and tear it apart for a while. And I'm like, we should probably take it in and have a look at for a $10,000 bill of things that needed to be fixed on the car. And it was like one of those like, whoa, we have gone too far. <laughs> we have pushed this thing well beyond its limits. Like, do we even do the work on it now? Like that kind of stuff. And I think that that's where a lot of people get with their calendars and they're, they're, they get so far off track that it's a, do we just sell this whole system and restart with a brand new process? Maybe we go find a new CRM. Maybe we find a new calendaring system. Maybe we do this thing over here because we've let this one break so far. And where really it's just routine maintenance with it. You can make a lot of these things work really well and stay on top of it. It's so funny because you're right. People always get to that point. Oh, this is broken. Now I need something new. And and I, I saw somebody had made this comment in a Reddit thread or as a forum that I was looking at for cars. And um, someone was asking about buying high mileage vehicles. I like to buy high mileage vehicles I do personally. Too. But it is hard to figure that out. There's a lot of due diligence you have to do. And, and someone said, listen, any engine today should easily last over 200,000 miles. You just need to maintain it. Drive hard, maintain it hard, right? And I was like, oh, that just, when you brought up that analogy, it's like, that's your calendar. And the people who have a lot of problems with the calendar are people who are running their business hard, right? Which is awesome. I'm, I'm super excited for those people, but you have to maintain your calendar and maintain your routine hard as well and do those maintenance. I mean, that means each morning, double checking the agenda for the day and making sure that you have everything on there that's going to move the business forward and we're not missing anything. It means showing up for your weekly agenda and sitting down and having that meeting with yourself and filling out the form and submitting it to your coach. You all know who you are. Uh, and I'm not talking about just my people. <laughs> it means looking at the systems that you have and if something's not working, making the adjustment right then and there, right? Like if you hear the thing on the car, let's say it's not even, if you let it go, it's not going to be an expensive fix. But it can become an inconvenience because all of a sudden, oh, now I'm stuck because the car now needs to go into the shop, but I can't drive it because this part is broken, which if I just fixed that part two weeks ago, I wouldn't be in this situation. Yep. And I think that's the element of making those choices when, when it's in front of you. And, this, and those are the hard decisions because you have to now look at everything that's in front of you and say, hey, I'm making the choice to move forward with this. But when you make the choice, just go right? Don't let it sit there. Don't let it wait. And so like when that ping comes, if you set up a reminder on your calendar for your hour of power, ding, it's time to do the hour of power. It's not, oh, let me push that off until this and do this. It's like, no, I'm going to decide to now move into action and do that element of my business because I know that is crucial to helping me build the future that I want with this business. And so I'm going to do that. And now all of a sudden the pings are effective. So I want you to expand on this now because one of the other elements that you brought up in the very beginning of this was the power of taking ownership of these pieces, taking ownership of what we do put on our calendar. And, you know, does it need a ping for us to show up for it or does it need, is it something different? And I, that we need to basically have that in our mind of like, look, it's non-negotiable. This thing's on my calendar. It's in my world. I know exactly the things in my world that I got to be there for certain times. I don't need a calendar to tell me. And I love where you kind of went with this because I think this is yeah. the element that a lot of people never really lean into enough. Yeah, there's a discipline here. And, and I've thought about it more since we've talked about this, the, the you know, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and which is, it, it depends on who you are, right? If you need that nudge, awesome, have that. But I think if you're using that nudge as a way to take place 
of the lack of ownership, that's not going to be effective, yeah. right? We can put all the reminders and things that we want, but until you decide that that is something that I'm going to take ownership of on my calendar, this whole process I need to take ownership of because I'm the only thing that I can control, then it does become easier, right? And there's little, th like use waking up and, and working out as an example. I do need an alarm to wake me up because I wake up stupid early. My body, I, although it's weird, I'm starting to experience these little, I'm waking up like 15 minutes. I'm like, no, I want that 15 minutes. So I'm going back to sleep and letting the alarm pull me up. <laughs> but I don't need the uh, reminder of what I need to go do, yep. right? That wakes me up and I know I'm going to get up. I'm going to put my clothes on. They're already set out. I'm going to go do a workout. Right now, that workout isn't necessarily prescribed because I've gotten to the place where I can just, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But in the beginning, it was, this is what is going to happen. And so with something like an hour of power, I look at the relation of that is, you know, it's coming when you set your day. The difference is you're already awake. You know what's coming at 10. So you don't need the reminder to do the hour of power. You probably just need a reminder that the time is coming, right? Because you're we're not, we're not going to just sit there and stare at the clock on the wall and be like, okay, let me, I'm just going to wait five more minutes, five more minutes, and I'm going to do my hour of power. So if you need the reminder just to pull you out of whatever it is, great. But if you're controlling what it is beforehand, you're probably going to be able to wrap and roll right into it. And here's the key is having that hour of power as the example of this is what I'm doing. It's not a, here's a ping for your hour of power. Now figure out what you're going to do. It's, I already know, because I've made the decision of how I'm going to perform in that time block. And I think that's, that's a discipline. That's an ownership versus a, let me just kind of toss it up in the air and see what happens, if that makes sense. I think it's amazing from the coach's perspective, when we're working with somebody and you watch somebody take ownership of a system, where it's not a, I'm like gonna put this on my calendar and do this, like this, we've talked about the just do it mentality. When the just do it mentality goes away, and it's just like, no, that that's what I do. And yeah. I think it's, Matt, it's funny, because if we look at all of our businesses, there are certain things. Like if you take a, um, we're going to stick with real estate here for a second. We take a listing presentation. As you have grown as a listing agent, as a realtor, there are things that you do now that you didn't do when you first started. You didn't even know to do it. And then you're like, oh, that's a cool idea. I just heard this great thing from so-and-so in my office, and I'm going to add that in. I think I might start doing a pre-listing packet. And at first, it was a very clunky mechanical thing of like, okay, yeah, that's right. I need to make my pre-listing packets. I need to put them out. I need to do this. And there's a certain point that you cross a threshold of, no, that's just how I do my business. My pre-listing packets go out. It's not a, it's not a like, I hope I can get these done. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be cool if I could offer this stuff? And you, you, again, you, you take ownership of it and you look at a whole bunch of other stuff of, I do pre-home inspections. I do all these things before, you know, all this stuff was a great thought at one point in time. I'm just going to do it because my clients really deserve it. I should offer that level of service to know this is just who I am and what you can expect from me as your real estate agent. And I think in your calendars, we spend a lot of time in the person we want to be that we're building into our calendar instead of the person that we are that the calendar represents. Or that we identify Something sounds weird with that, or the the person we I want to identify as. How would we build that identity? You're you're so spot on. I think like going back to the story you were explaining. I need to fix my calendar, and it's not that I need to fix my calendar. It's I need to fix myself. I need to fix what I'm deciding to be, and then the calendar is going to be the tool that I'm going to use to help me build that out. Yep. And again, I think that um, the, the fun part of the calendar, especially for a lot of you that are newer in the Ninja, I think it's a great place too to map out that person that you intend to be. Yeah. And I think it's a great place to get ahead of it and say, look, this is the success pattern that I want to build in that maybe I haven't had in my life and in my business and in my focus. And, and then there's that next place there where at some point, as you said, Matt, you've got to take ownership of these individual pieces. And it can't be the ping on your uh, on your calendar that alerts you to do it every single time because now it's a crutch because when the ping doesn't happen, you won't do it. And now we're backed into a corner around that. And then all of a sudden we decide that it's really not something I choose to show up for because it's not something I take ownership of and I go do something else. And at some point, you need to ask yourself, am I willing to take ownership of this? Have I sat down and really defined 
I usually look at it as the who, when, what, where, how, and why. Have I defined it in that way? So I'm uber clear on all these gifts that's given to me around this. And then I can say, okay, does it need to be on the calendar more? Or do I just have a clear mind? As you said, I wake up on Monday, have my coffee, have some breakfast, do my gratitudes and affirmations, fall right into my Monday morning agenda. Hey, and you know, I have a lot of people that they're just like, well, when I'm done with my Monday morning agenda at that time, I move right into real estate reviews and I make those happen and I make those all scheduled and boom, 10 o'clock hits. All right, it's real estate time. Like now I get to go do that. Yeah. So I think it's one of those places that you've got to take this bigger sense of ownership around. And that's that's the mindset that you have to have. And you've got to take that at some point in time and, and own it. It's owning it. Yeah, absolutely. So acknowledging that different things work for different people, you know, I'd be curious because it's always nice to see and just learn from other people, not necessarily take what somebody else is doing and then apply it to yourself. But I'm just curious. So, you know, this podcast goes live, guys. We always drop the podcast episodes in our Facebook group. You know, comment below, you know, what's what's working for you in your calendar? Where are you stuck? And maybe we can also help each other out with that. And since it is so personalized too, uh, you know, I'll say if, if you want specific one-on-one help with this stuff, you know, having a coach can really help you see some of the outside things. It's helped me when I have people come in and, and help me see this is how my world works. Well, have you ever thought about this? Because we do get locked into the way we do things, particularly when it comes to how we manage our time and view our time. And having somebody help you work through that can be a tremendous help. So you can always check us out, right? <laughs> Garrett at ninjacoaching.com or over at Ninja Selling, there's a Ninja Coaching button there. But Garrett, anything else before we wrap this episode up here? No, I think I, as you'd mentioned, Matt, I think uh, if anybody wants to post in there, but also I, I'm going to ask everybody to be a little bit vulnerable around this one. And that if you have lost control of your calendar, if your calendar is something that is pinging at you and you're not paying attention anymore, if you have a whole bunch of activities in there that is the person that you want to be, but you're you're choosing not to show up as it every single day, what I have found as we've grown as a coaching program, as we've shared more people's stories, as we share a lot of these things that a lot of people have struggles with around, one of the biggest pieces that people walk away from saying, they'll say to me, it was so good to hear that other people are struggling with this, or it's so good to hear that other people are finding challenges around a certain thing, because very easily we can tear ourselves down thinking we're the only ones. And when you can put it out there and say, like, look, I'm having a problem with this, it kind of opens up that place of others being able to say, I am too, I am too. And then you'll have another person that will say, I am, but here's how I fixed it. And that you need to open up those opportunities and open up those places around you. And it's why it's so important. I've gone through my whole life asking lots of questions and being comfortable with uh, sometimes looking a little silly with things that I maybe feel like I should know, but I don't know. And I have learned so much being willing to accept that I don't know a lot of things around me. And I think that in these types of situations, like it's okay to say, hey, I don't have this mastered and I'm struggling with this because uh, others will, will find comfort in that, but it will also make all of you go search for answers. So that, that would be my biggest thing. If you're going to share that in there, don't just share the wins all the time. Like if you're struggling with it, put that in there and say, hey, I'm looking for help too. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. And, and know that if you're struggling, you're not alone for one, two, like nobody is 100% perfect. I have my own challenges and struggles with, with my calendar as well. I'm by no means perfect. Garrett's by no means perfect. It's pretty close. Mine's, um, we're mine's always close. striving to be better, right? Close, right? But the, the, it's the, it's the closeness, right? That we're always <laughs> there with. So, so guys, if you're not in our community and want to go participate in this conversation that we're suggesting that you all participate in, head over to Facebook and search for The Ninja Selling Podcast. You will find that community there, as Garrett mentioned, closing in on 15,000 people, which is absolutely incredible. And you can always find us at ninjaselling.com. Guys, we hope that you have an incredible day. We appreciate you listening and tuning in. And if you'd please share the podcast with somebody who you think might find value out of it, that would be incredible. We really appreciate all of y'all who do that. So have an awesome day and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you, everybody. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.